Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Yes, you saw the thumbnail correctly. I bought a Glowforge, and when I say bought, I bought it. Um, this is not a paid promotional. This is not a, hey, we'll give you something for kickback for mentioning us. I paid the full price for my Glowforge. I paid the full price for my materials. Uh, I've been wanting one for a while, and with the stimulus check that came in recently... Guess what? You grows the economy. Benefits yeah. everybody. That, that's partly Hurts what nobody. I used it for was to, to finally bite the bullet and buy one. I'm super pumped to use it. My Patreons have actually known about it for a little bit because I've leaked some, some behind the scenes stuff for them. And I've been playing around with it for a couple of weeks now, trying to get the hang of stuff. And I've got some awesome things in the works that I think you guys will really like. I don't want you to get discouraged and thinking, oh great, now he's just going to make CNC stuff all the time and I'm not going to be able to build the things he built. That is not the intention of the purchase of this machine. I see me using it more for like cutting out lenses or intricate cuts that I could technically do with a blade, but it'd be easier to let the machine do. Um, or even just kind of making merch for my Etsy store, um, keychains and things like that. So let me know what you would like to see me build with it. Um, I've got a couple of things already in the works and I've tinkered with it a bit. So this video is going to be me kind of learning the stuff that it can do. So I'll show you a couple of things that I made from the get go. And the end result, because I don't want to leave you hanging on a prop build, I, I'm going to customize a dice tower that I found on Thingiverse, which I'll link down in the description below. I'm going to customize one of those, and that'll be my end result. So let's get to building a dice tower and showing off the new toy that I'm obsessed with. And um, probably my wife will never see me again because I'll be in this room all the time. Let's get the belly. I had to wait around for about a month and a half to finally get this thing to come in the mail and I'm super pumped to open this thing up and get started. This is how it came to me, partially torn on one side, thanks mailman. The large package weighed about 85 pounds and the smaller one I think was around 25 surprisingly. In the small box was the crumb tray, the vent tube, the power cables, and some sample materials. The big box is the main show. It's very well padded and has lots of stuff to secure the parts. I've watched about a dozen unboxing videos of Glowforge so I kind of know the routine of it all by heart. I have a vinyl cutter, a PLA, and a resin 3D printer, so I'm kind of not new at learning new interfaces. I will say Glowforge is very simple and user friendly. I kind of wish that it wasn't web based software though. Living in an area where the internet is not so great, I can see some issues arising from internet going down. My wife loves puzzles so I quickly insert a small puzzle to test the machine out. I can see myself just staring at this thing as it burns through materials and sings its sweet robot songs to me. Ha! <laughs> I did have to run a vent hose out the window directly behind what you see here and build a little slot for the opening in the window to close it off. Here is Mrs. Much Props putting together this puzzle I'm cutting out here. I think she let me buy this machine just so I would make her more new puzzles.
Enough messing around, time to build the dice tower. I downloaded the file from Thingiverse from a user called Sky779. I'll put links to their model in the description below. It's a small dice tower and I like that the tray slots in so it doesn't take up a lot of space when you're not using it. Glowforge has materials that they sell for their machine that are called proof grade. That's what you see me using here. They come with a tape over the front and back to protect the material from scorching. It also has a QR code on the front of it which is nice because the camera recognizes that code and then preps the machine to print at its best settings for that material. You can use other materials but it requires you kind of figuring out the settings for the speed and intensity and you may go through a little bit of material figuring those things out. Cool kid points if you know what this etch design is added on to around my button here. When it finishes, you give the machine an extra couple of seconds to vent out any extra vapors and then it'll tell you that it's ready to open. I'm cutting the dice tower out of medium density draft board, which is about an eighth of an inch thick. And I'll be saving all these little scraps you see on the edges here for other builds. After pulling it out of the bed, I need to remove all the tape. Biting my fingernails makes this step a little bit more difficult, but I managed to pull, pull it off on both sides. For more intricate cuts, you could actually use duct tape and push it down against the covering masking tape to then pull it all off in one pull. After figuring out the basic orientation of the parts, I begin assembly. I'm using some super glue to secure all the parts together. Some parts are very snug while other parts have a little bit of wiggle room. The tower consists of two parts, the step shaft that the dice drops down and the little drawer that catches it at the bottom. It's a small tower and once I get it done assembling it, the shape kind of gives me an idea to turn it into a little goblin head with a crown because it kind of has that crown shape at the top already. So I need to print a crown to kind of put an overlay over what's already there.
I took into account the width of the material and made two separate sized crowns, one just a little bit wider so that when I glue it down, the edges will line up. I probably should have marked a line to make it straight, but I just went for it and of course, I quickly got it positioned, crooked in the super glue, set it fast, and now I'm stuck with a crooked crown. So, oh well, I'll try and fix it with the paint job. To seal the wood, I sprayed on three coats of automotive primer and filler. I grabbed some 320 grit sandpaper and smoothed the surface of the tower to ready it for paint. It fills in some of the small gaps and will hopefully seal the draft board enough that it doesn't just soak up the next layer of spray paint. <laughs> I paint my goblin green and the crown yellow with some spray paint. I wanted to add some color variations to my character here, so I just started slathering on paint, mixing it on wet, and hopefully adding a good base to finish off. I'm using Platifex acrylic paint. To be honest, I didn't really like how it turned out once I got done with the paint job and decided to maybe add black lines to the character to make it a little more cartoony, and hopefully that'll hide some of the crimes that I just committed on this piece of wood. Last, I glued on some glass eyes to finish off my Goblin King. To tie the eyes in better with the rest of the character, I went back and painted on some black lines around the edges to finish the eyes off. <laughs> And we are finished. Te technically, this is where I hold up a prop and I present to you the end result. So I did finish this dice tower um, build that I downloaded from Thingiverse and just did a cool paint job on. Well, hopefully it's it's a cool paint job. Let me know. Uh, but this machine is pretty awesome. Obviously, it has its limitations in what you can cut out. You're cutting flat surfaces and trying to build up a structure. I get that. Um, it does really good at cutting wood um, and it makes the, the work area here smell awesome, having that nice burnt wood smell. Uh, of course, the child in me, the first thing I made was a ninja star, of course, uh, but it does cut a lot of other materials very well. It slices through foam like it's nothing. I can see myself using this for like little intricate cuts like this that for me by hand I could do, but it probably wouldn't turn out this clean. Um, it etches acrylic really nice. I don't know if you can see that. This is kind of what I see in a lot of it being done as me etching something into a either something in foam or wood or an acrylic and using that as a piece to a prop to add an extra detail. Not something necessary, but just something that would be super cool. There are also tons of people out there on Thingiverse and other platforms that have already made things that you download their, their files for and can within a matter of an hour or so have an end result that is super sturdy, cool, and you can build off of it. 
That's another thing that I probably see myself doing a lot instead of going out and buying random things is making those random things and then building off of them. Um, like this will probably end up being a build at some point. And it also gives me the ability to design my own things. This, this is a video coming up. Um, I, I learned a couple of different softwares so that I can cut stuff out and design things myself to piece together. So I'm super excited to, to be learning new skills. So maybe you will try and make something using a CNC cutter or at least step out of your comfort zone and learn a new skill. Hopefully. Maybe you'll get some... Yay! And inevitably, someone's going to ask you, how'd you... How'd you... How'd you make that? And give them one of these. Tell them, much props. Or Clough Forager. Thingiverse, or whatever else you got it from. Um, get in the box. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and would like to see more builds from me, please consider joining these awesome people over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community.